Okay, I'm going to try and record a uh, audio track while I'm watching the video. Um, okay, so we're getting set up here. Um, I wanted to play uh, 50NL, but there wasn't a table available. Um, I'm not sure this is going to work. Uh, yeah, it's a little thing from here, but you can open this from LoJack. Um, yeah, that's why you don't want to do it all the time. Uh, there's one horrendous play in the session, which we'll get to. Um, but, you know, uh, doing this mostly for entertainment versus purposes, fun, and studying a lot. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I time out here because I was talking, thinking, um, but I wasn't recording, unfortunately, which is why I'm doing it this way now. But you can do all three things here. You can fold, you can call, you can raise, and I was going to raise, but uh, tapped out. Um, yeah, clear fault. Um, yeah, um, I'm not sure it's my worst dance swing ever, but just in the middle of a dance swing, um, which happens to poker, you know, um, 12 spots in a row where I got it all in with the best hand and lost. It's, you know, that happens. And i um, got to have a good mental game. Um, I have a friend who always used to say, uh, I take the game seriously, but I don't take myself seriously. And I think that's a great attitude. You know, study a lot, do your best, and just let go of the results. Um, being properly bankrolled is obviously key, too. Um, unfortunately, right before the big down swing, I had to move a bunch of money out of my bankroll for uh, we had some personal expenses. So, uh, uh, you know, um, I actually uh, went back down to 25 NL and uh, made it. Pretty quickly back uh, to 50 and was uh, just about at 100 NL when uh, the downswing hit. Um, and so I'm playing 50 NL. Um, you know, uh, before all that happened, I was uh, starting to take shots at 200 NL and doing well. Um, I like 200 NL. Um, it's a nice combination of skill and occasional recreational players, you know, skilled players and recreational players. So I think it's a good environment to make money. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm very much still in my mind a novice, still learning, don't know, don't know a lot. Uh, keep studying, uh, trying to do my best. The, uh, but I have been, I feel like uh, last few months especially, I feel like I had a growth spurt, made a lot of um, good good uh, decisions and um, about studying and, and learned some stuff that has really, I think, helped my game. Yes, still a long way to go, but, you know, Going in the right direction, at least a little bit. Um, yeah. And uh, people seem to like the last uh, fast play uh, video, so that's why I'm doing another one, just for fun. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, It's a fold. No, I'm just not folding. Well, I guess I could raise it if everyone folds to me. But, uh, uh, you know, it's hard to uh, 
uh, like I said, I was I was I was narrating, but not recording. So um, uh, hard for me to think and talk at the same time and play. Um, so I was a little casual. Um, um, Ace Jack, offsuit, fine three bit hand from small blind. Um, nothing too complicated here. I'm not even sure I got into any complicated spots that required any sort of analysis. Um, I don't know about anyone else, but I find um, I rarely see flops in fast play poker. A lot of it action happens pre-flops. It's important to know my ranges and adjust them. If I, if I can sort of spot uh, player tendency, it's hard to do. I don't use a HUD um, on admission because in short sessions, the statistics you gather are really meaningless because of variance. You just, there's just no way to know. Um, you could have a nit. You got like aces, ace king, queens, and, you know, first 10 hands, he, you know, he looks like a aggressive player. You just, you know, it's, you just don't know. So, yeah. um, again, you can open here. Um, same situation. Uh, King Jack, obviously. Yeah, Jack. Um, like ten eight, easy. Not the greatest flop. Um, not the worst card. Not the best card. Um, but I think uh, when Dylan checks on that board with the ace, I think Dylan is saying he doesn't have anything but has a five. And so I think a, uh, a big bet will get the job done. Um, yeah. So I guess that's a little analysis. That's it for the wit and wisdom of keep on up today. Um, yeah, I, you know, I guess in my recent studies, I'm just really reminded over and over how important it is to um, Henry, even, I mean, the, the marriage of knowing GTO, why different hand values have different incentives and all that and stuff. And, but then adding hand reading to that and then uh, um, paying close attention to the action. And um, I've also been um, employing timing tells, um, especially in the big blind, paying attention to the cutoff and about how long they take before they decide to bet. Um, uh, my three bidding range from the big line uh, is pretty, uh, not pretty, it is polarized. Um, I do a lot of uh, light three bidding in the big line, and it works well. <laughs> um, yeah. And the other, I think another. Um, Stealing from the button is another place where I think it helps to uh, have a sense of who's in the big mind, obviously, and uh, or population tendencies. I do a lot of population research for admission, and I think that is valuable. Um, I really like drive up two for that. I use poker track four and drive up two, uh, but I like the way drive up two displays the population report and. Uh, and the fact that I can create custom, I mean, you can do that in Perfect Tracker 4 also, but <laughs> it's a filter. You can only do it one time at a time. They call it, you create a filter in Driver 2, but you can add it to the stats. So it's there all the time, and it doesn't, um, 
you can compare it. Like if you're doing bed sizes, you could do like four bed sizes and see how Dylan reacts in the same situation to different bed sizes. Which you can't really do a poker drip for because you have to do a separate report each time because it's different. That's a pretty good hand on that flop. Um, this nine. It sort of plays itself. Uh, don't be scared of the flush. Um, but two pair is not. Um, it's not us. It's not a full house. <laughs> so when there's a pair on the board, you have two pair. You want to be a little careful. Um, more so than the flush, I think. Um, so I, I don't think the solver would overbet there. I think the three quarters bet on the river is the right size, and the villain will call with worse, and uh, will raise with better. So you. You'll get out of there without too much damage. Um, yeah, that's that's one of the big evolutions in my thinking as a poker player. It's not mind losing so much. It's all about losing the minimum. This this session is a really good example of that. Um, I'm doing okay, not doing terribly, but you know there there's spots where I have to fold um, and not lose more money. And I think that's really key, uh, recognizing those spots and not, not, not being a big scaredy cat, not, you know, like not folding to a small raise here, for example, with a queen nine and a king queen eight board, uh, but understanding when, uh, you know, if Dylan makes a, another generous bet here, um, Then this is an interesting spot um, when he bets here because, um, you know, or he didn't bet. Okay. If he had bet, it would have been an interesting spot. But um, yeah. But that's why you call that flop <laughs> because he's, you know, uh, things I know about the admission population when they see that too much. Uh, they just do uh, their range bet on boards they shouldn't range bet. Um, and, uh, and their bet size and betrays kind of their thinking a lot. So those are two really important things to pay attention to. Um, also, they fold too much to see bets, uh, to small seat bets. Um, you know, if you bet 25% pot, the one should be calling at 80% of this range. And nobody's doing that, obviously. Um, that doesn't make it automatically profitable, um, but it's strong incentive to uh, ironically see that too much. It's <laughs> probably why pool does it because it works. Um, but uh, you know, I still try and control my see in frequency. Um, I I bet on favorable boards where a range bet is, uh, you know, where I have big equity and not advantage where a solver would branch bet. Um, and they probably bet a little bit more on favorable boards where the solver would have more of a checking range, maybe. Really depends um, on the texture. Uh, but I often do not, you know, especially out of position, um, you, know, you should have a very, very strong checking range. Um, I think that's the biggest mistake I've seen in pool. And I understand it. Um, it's tempting because pool sees a check as weakness. So I actually check, I actually bet more bluffs out of position than I do with value. I often um, will, uh, you know, you just make more money by checking with value generally because another thing pool does too much is uh, they don't have a, 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 a strong enough or wide enough checking range in position as pre pop caller. They will. Um, they'll see the check as weakness and they'll, they'll, they'll probe on the flop in completely inappropriate ways. And uh, if you combine that with timing tells, um, for example, uh, if you pay attention and you have, let's say you have just garbage on a flop and uh, you check 
and Dylan takes about 20 seconds and then makes a half-hearted stab at the pot. Um, it might be a great opportunity just to raise and take, yeah, I've done it numerous times. And it's, it's, it's not infallible, nothing's infallible. There are no guarantees, but it works a lot. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's one thing. I'm trying to think of any other cool tendencies that are money in the bank. Um, river bet sizing is really a tell, I find. Uh, it's almost guaranteed if pool overbets the river that they have the goods. Um, rarely do they bluff with an overbet. Um, not saying never again, it does happen, but you know, um, it's much more common that they have value when they overbet. Um, yeah, so, yeah. I don't know, to kind of set my name the dates there. Um, not kind of, basically. I mean, you can get a good flop. That's not where well, you don't make a set. You can still make money there, but it's, uh, which is why uh, it's a good play. Um, if it was just set my name, uh, you know, like fours or threes or twos, something like that, I think it's it's not a good play. You'd want a full pre flop. But um, it has more equity. Uh, yeah, and it, and um, you know, uh, if villain range is unfiltered, in other words, they start with a wide range, and there's nothing in the previous action that strengthens their range exceedingly. You know, like villain range bets, small, you know, as button and call and then they check the turn and then the river doesn't really uh, hit their range and it, you know um, and uh, you have uh, a good bluff catcher that blocks value and then blocks bluffs and they're unfiltered and they take a little bit of time before they bet small on the river just call <laughs> it's amazing how many times I've won pots like that just you know it's just like yeah uh, yeah, over bluffing, I think, um, in certain situations, uh, is, is another thing I think one can uh, learn about uh, villains, about pool here and that mission. I think that's pretty common. Um, obviously, villain does not check raise enough, uh, although. You know, the higher up you go, the less true that is. Um, and that's true of all these things I'm saying. Uh, although, I would also say that um, there's, you know, there's definitely more skilled players um, at 200 NL than there are at 25 NL. But there's still, there are still occasionally um, less skilled players, recreational players, who have leaks you can spot, and take advantage of. Um, the 200 now. I, I really like 200 now. It's just, um, it's fun. And, uh, uh, you know, it's fun to play against skilled players who have, I won't call them leaks, but predictable behavior that you can sometimes take advantage of. And then recreational players who have um, leaks, who, have, who you, you, know, you can spot and really um, punish them, uh, take them on. And occasionally you get somebody who just wants to give you their money, they're so bad, that's rare. You know, I think that's rare at any level, honestly. Um, but it, you know, it happens. It's nice when it happens at 200 um, Yeah, and I say all this with love. I have been all of those players myself, even even today, you know, I can make previous mistakes, I think, I think. I forget, I wasn't really paying attention to the video while I was talking. Um, I don't know whether we have, uh, the, oh, I've got, well, I'm past. No, I don't think so. I think it's coming up, the king, queen, the small blind. 
I decided to go for a raise. It was just a terrible play. It's a bluff catcher out of position, reverse implied outstanding against a um, early position open and then a min raise um, from the hijack. You know, it's just a fault. And I know it. You know, I'm just goofing around. Uh, it took a, took a wild stab in it. Didn't work. <laughs> but, you know, it's okay. It's, you know, he said, uh, you know, there's some entertainment value, you know, and uh, so I might do a silly thing now and then uh, at 25 and out. The, uh, Yeah, those doubts makes me. You know, they're a thing. <laughs> you just gotta be able to, you know, dust yourself off and just, you know, put it behind you. And, you know, like those professional athletes say, you know, just gotta have a short memory um, and a big bankroll. Gotta be properly bankrolled. Can't, cannot feel that pain. You know, never invest money you can't afford to lose. Um, uh, and you know what I, I mean I try and concentrate like obviously right now and while I was playing this this session I wasn't uh, concentrating too much because I was talking and, and uh, yeah but and I'm thinking of things to say but the um, I try and concentrate when I play on um, you know sometimes I have a specific uh, part of my game that I'm concentrating on. Sometimes I just concentrate on um, my regular checklist, make sure I'm aware of range advantage, nut advantage, landing equity, um, fold equity, whether I'm in a favorable or unfavorable spot for my range, uh, what villain likely has got to the spot with what's villain's uh, value, what's villains, um, you know, kind of bluffs. Not not within decimal points, obviously. Um, it's all very vague and quick, especially at Zoom Poker. Um, and here's a question. Why, I don't quite understand why people play multi-table fast poker. I mean, I mean, how many hands do you need to play in an hour? <laughs> You know, obviously, like, you're playing, like, fast poker. You're not, you know, you're in a hand all the time. And it seems to me being in two hands all the time is, for me, would be counterproductive. Um, hard. Maybe because I'm old. You young people can probably do four tables using fast poker. I don't know. But I find, I find it hard uh, to do more than one table fast poker. I can do two tables regular six max, which is my game. And that makes sense to me. You know, because the games can be slow and um, you know, doubling the volume from a, a income point of view is, is, is probably a good idea. Oh yeah, so like the East 5 hand when um, Boone calls the three bet. It's a good flop for my range, but, you know, thankfully, Villain lets me know that they have a good hand and I can fold. Because <laughs> if Villain had checked, Villain would have made a lot more money. Um, yeah, that's another thing. That is that. Uh, did I say that? I don't think I did. I said it about being in position, out of position, same thing. Villain does not, um, uh, probably does not, uh, Villain probably plays too straightforwardly sometimes at pool. Not not protecting their checking range enough, not um, uh, you know, and you don't always want to slow, slow play out of position, obviously, you know, there's, you know, I personally, um, I think I did say this, that I tend to, uh, if I if I have a good bluff, I'll tend to bet more out of position immediately than, you know, I'll donk. Um, well, no, I almost never donk. 
actually, but if I'm the pre-flat producer and I'm at a position, I will. Um, uh, you know, bluff, oh, bluff, um, Maybe it's out of position. Bluff bat, bluff bat out of position. Um, on the flop, um, just to put pressure on Vinland's range. Um, here's the hand. That, that's, that was the hand. The king, queen, offsuit one. Small bet. Min raise. Gets to me. Fold. Do I fold? No. I decided to be a goofball and go for a big raise and get punched for it. But fortunately, I get punished right away, so I don't lose too much money. Um, really bad delay. Um, just that's just a fold. Just a fold. No, no that's not what I do. Yeah, and you know, pre-flop jams are, are interesting too. Um, I think villains tend to pre-flop jam too much with the aces and kings. Um, kings is more understandable. Um, his king is even more understandable as pre-flop jam. Um, but the, uh, you know, if, if one is in position with aces, and one three bets and gets four bets, you know, calling there is not a terrible idea. <laughs> you know, uh, if villain, you know, I mean, with pool, it's not, well, you know, so you can't go wrong uh, with pool unless, um, unless you have, you know, the solver with, with jam jacks there, that's a mistake with pool because they don't have tens, none of the times they're, Generally, they have four bet those hands. Um, and you're lucky if they call those hands. So they have an aces or kings or ace kings. So you're not in great shape with jacks. Uh, you're not even in great shape with queens. Calling in position with queens to a four bet is not a terrible idea. It gets a pool. Um, same with jacks. And you can even, um, if it's an early position, Razor, you can fold jacks, I think. Um, yeah, to a four bet. Um, yeah. Um, but the, the kind of rush to get all the money in pre-flop by some players, I think, is a mistake sometimes. Um, and there's lots of situations where you know, um, pool will fold to a jam, and you're not making any money. <laughs> you're making the minimum. Whereas if um, you had called and seen a flop, you had a chance to make a lot more money. And then that, you know, EV, the EV of calling is higher than the EV of jam sometimes. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot about this king's hand. Um, uh, yeah, the uh, that that flop's not the greatest flop. Um, so I think checking there is okay. I think betting there is okay too. It's really close. Um, but you know, villain checks twice. Obviously, we have to bet, and obviously, he's going to fold. No, because uh, you know, I can't even imagine what they have. Um, and weird, weird for a villain not to stab on the turn there on that flop with that turn card against my uh, three bet match. But yeah, understandable too. You know, if they have like pocket fours or something, but just to show them that. Yeah, although they had a force would have straight drop. Um, yeah, 
an nice good hand. Good situation to bet. A bit of jack 10 and a queen knight jack 6 board. Um, obviously, um, could check too. No problem there. Um, kind of a hybrid bluff value. You know, some denial. If you want to have like a, you know, other, would they fold suited ace? I don't know. They might fold something else, like a, you know, a, if a flush card came in. Uh, that would make life miserable, but, uh, you know, you know it, there's a lot of gray areas uh, in poker. I mean, coaches who are, like, adamant about this or that, I think, um, I think that's a mistake. I think it's okay to be um, confused sometimes and not know what the answer is and understand that it's complicated. Uh, yeah. Hmm. We're all we're all feeling our way in the dark here, and that's okay. And you know, poker's life, life is poker. Yeah, that was fun. Thanks for watching.